Hi folks and welcome back to the shack and uh, I've just completed two weeks of on-call um, at, the, at the hospital where I work and uh, one of the problems when you're on-call is that um, you can't really get stuck into uh, projects um, you don't, don't really have much time to do radio or anything really because you're forever waiting for the phone to go off and uh, sometimes you can get called out to various emergencies but um, I decided to do a little project um, just to sort of uh, keep myself uh, occupied in between the uh, uh, downtimes, or in the downtimes I should say. And what I've done, I've built this little thing here. And this is actually an FM radio, and it's a, what they call a pulse counting FM radio. And I didn't really think that this would really work very well. Um, my experience of building FM radios, well, I've done. I've actually built a couple of solid state ones, which have been pretty good. But I've never really built a, ba a valve FM tuner. And traditionally, you know, when you look at valve FM radios, it's quite interesting actually because when they came out, when when if you look at sort of vintage radios or vintage FM radios that were around sort of in the 50s and 60s. There's not an awful lot of them because at the time that FM was being introduced uh, back in the, um, I would say it was the early 60s, I, I guess, um, you had transistors coming along. So there wasn't really sort of a really good time period, you know, for really interesting uh, FM valve tuners. I mean, you can buy them. They are, they are, they are out there. But um, you sort of had this transition between valve technology and semiconductors and that was the same sort of period that was you know you had um, FM being introduced you know throughout the country so being with my interest in valve technology I wanted to sort of build up an FM radio because we you know we've done the super head with valves we've done the medium wave uh, receiver which I showed you on the last video so logic logically I guess we should do an, uh, an FM radio so hence this thing here um, but the other problem is with FM radios, as you know, well, F, you know, that I think VHF starts to get a little bit tricky in terms of home brewing. You have to pay specific attention to making your circuits, you know, you, there's not, there's, you, you can't um, be too lax with, you know, long wire lengths and things like that, because otherwise the thing's going to go out to kill zone, you know, when you're dealing with high frequencies, you've got to pay that much more attention to the layout of your receiver or even a transmitter otherwise it's not going to work so well and when I sort of looked up FM tuners or FM radios you know there's all sorts of you know you can build them with in a similar sort of fashion to a normal superhead but they tend to they generally are double conversion so you've got to have two IF stages you know usually that involves 10 megahertz 10.7 megahertz and then another IF stage and then you have to have things like what they call ratio detectors which is one way uh, how an FM receiver works and ratio detector coils um, they are out there but they're not that easy to find and that kind of like put me off a little bit so in the end I went for what's called a pulse counting FM receiver which is what this is and I've actually been surprised it's actually relatively easy to build there's not much to it there's no there's only one tuned circuit in it. There's no IF cans or anything like that. It doesn't need anything, any fancier lining. And it pretty well worked first time after it needed a couple of tweaks, but, and the audio quality out of this is, as I'll show you, is almost like hi-fi quality. I mean, this is really as good as it gets in terms of building a, a nice FM radio out of valves. Anyway, let me show you the circuit, because it's, then you get an idea of how this whole thing works. Um, and then I'll give you a bit of a demo of it as well. Okay, I got this uh, circuit diagram for, the, for my uh, FM radio off this uh, website, uh, which is called cool386.com. And uh, it's very interesting. If you're interested in anything vintage, um, <clears throat> this website, who, who uh, is based in Australia, uh, by a, and it was done by a chap called John. I don't know much more about him because... 
there's not much on his website uh, about what he does and everything but he's obviously got quite a good interest in uh, all things vintage and he's done quite a few uh, pulse counting FM radios which you can see from his website but um, using all sorts of various valves and uh, let me just scroll back this is the circuit I used which um, is actually quite easy to do uh, so if we look at the front end he's got a <clears throat> a triode here well half a triode it's actually part of a pento triode he uses a 6BL8 which is equivalent to an ECF80 which is what I used that's what I had available and this essentially acts um, almost like a buffer between the aerial and the uh, mixer which is the pento section here and the uh, you've got a tuned circuit here which forms your local oscillator and the output of, of this um, mixer is, is about 200 uh, kcs or kilohertz which is your IF and then you've got these three IF amplifiers stages which he used 6AU6s and I actually used uh, CV4014s which are sensibly equivalent to EF91s as they say on our type uh, so that's what I use that's because I had them available and they work just as well as uh, these these type of valves then the last valve here actually form is actually a limiter so it converts your sine wave uh, which is your, from your intermediate frequency because in order to get the pulses you have to um, <clears throat> use an IF you can't really use uh, a high frequency like 88 uh, megahertz or 88 to 108 uh, megahertz which is the broadcast band uh, frequency because it's simply too high so you have to down uh, frequency or down convert uh, to a sort of much lower IF in order to uh, get your pulses which you can then uh, demodulate uh, through this 6AL5 which is a standard double diode and then after that it goes to uh, a sort of pretty standard audio stage he's got another uh, 6AU6 there in triode uh, configuration and then it goes to um, a 6BM8 which is actually the uh, same as an ECL82 uh, which is what I've got um, he's got a uh, vacuum tube rectifier there which I didn't um, I, I use all solid state for mine just to make it a bit easier uh, so um, essentially that kind of like explains how a pulse counting uh, radio works um, there's, there's there's one or two good YouTube videos on it uh, which uh, if you put in pulse counting FM radio uh, there's one or two videos that does explain uh, how it works uh, in quite good uh, detail uh, so that's the um, that's the circuit diagram that I use and as I said if you go to cool386.com there's, there's, he's got loads of uh, interesting uh, circuits and a uh, um, lot of information about vintage tech in general okay so what we'll do is we'll um, have a closer look at the radio and I might try and fire it up and give you a bit of a demo on and see uh, just how good quality uh, audio this thing produces for such a sort of basic design. Just taking a look at the radio in more detail. This radio is so simple it's just unbelievable and uh, there's not many controls to, to work it. So if we look at the front panel here, I've just got this uh, cheap uh, vernier type thing for the uh, main tuning. And then we've got a knob here, which is probably about the only disadvantage with this receiver is that you've got an extra knob to tw twiddle. And that's actually the uh, screen voltage on the um, uh, local oscillator, which kind of like adjusts the sensitivity and the selectivity uh, of the uh, receiver. You just have to tune that in uh, when you're listening to get the best uh, uh, audio and the best uh, strength. And then the other knob here is just the power and the gain, and that's it. And we've got a little little five watt speaker. I've actually got a plug at the back which um, I can plug in an external speaker, which uh, makes it sound a little bit uh, a little bit better. 
anyway let's um let's have a quick look at the top again there's not much so looking at the top of the rig this box here um, essentially contains the tune circuit for the local oscillator I put a screening can there more for protecting the valve more than anything else doesn't seem to make a big difference whether that's there or not <clears throat> but we've got our three CV 4014s EF 91s uh, in a line there and then that's an e that's actually an EB91 which is the same as a 6AN or oh, 6AL5 that's it which is a double diode detector at the back here I've got an EM80 which is basically like a magic eye to help tuning don't have to have that it's not essential but um, it looks quite cool and then the two valves in the front here that's another CV4014 and that's obviously a that's the ECL82 for the uh, the audio and then uh, that's a that's my um, 6.3 volt heat transformer and then that's my um, uh, HT actually the other way around actually but anyway <clears throat> the HT transformer this thing doesn't need actually an awful lot of HT volts to get it to work um, I'm actually using a um, 250 volt um, to well 230 volt I should say to 115 volt uh, secondary which has got two which I'm only using one and even that that once that's rectified and filtered it produces about 170 volts but you don't actually need such a, even, even that is a bit is is um, a bit too high because you have to be careful with this rig that you don't put too much HT on the triode section of the uh, um, <clears throat> of the mixer valve um, because what tends to happen is the triode um, if, if it um, has too much uh, gain it tends to switch itself off and then you can't really hear anything so you have to be quite um, quite careful with the anode voltage on the first uh, triode um, which comes in after the aerial just something to be aware of if anybody wants to try and build one of these um, and I've actually got this thing to work on HD, on an HD voltage of 120 volts and it, and it works really well um, and I found that it was sort of lesser voltage was better than more right let's have a quick look at the under, underneath uh, not an awful lot to see there because um, as I said there's, uh, there's, not, there's not much uh, to this uh, rig The underside of this little receiver is also uh, pretty simple, and uh, the um, the construction is is much the same as my other receivers. You know, it's all point to point tags, etc. I find that the easiest thing to use. And again, I've gone for a very basic power supply there with a single hundred microfarad capacitor, little transformer there you can see is the uh, output transformer and the rest of it there's not much to it um, and, as, and uh, as I mentioned no cheating even underneath no uh, IF transformers or anything any uh, fancy coils that's it okay folks I've um, <clears throat> I've got my little radio set up here on the bench and it's it does like well especially where we are at the bottom of a valley um, you have to have a decent aerial for it uh, it doesn't work particularly well with just one of these telescopic aerials I think maybe if, you, if I was living in a big city it'd probably be alright but uh, here in um, in uh, Swansea or north of Swansea in the middle of nowhere at the bottom of a valley um, FM reception's not um, not that great but if you happen to have a 60 foot tower with a um, tri-bander on the top then it works great uh, so that's what we got uh, at the moment and um, I've tuned it into Radio 4 I, again like my other videos with these radios I've got to be ever so careful about uh, tuning in music stations which there are a lot of obviously on FM um, but I'll try and give you a brief demo as I said, I've got it tuned up to Radio 4 at the moment, so let's turn the volume up, plug in the external speaker, and then you can have a listen. There's a bit of hum when the volume's down, but... This is a route 
it's just, just too many shoots up and they'd just been taken off from the top and nothing had appeared above ground so they all had to go into pots so I reckon it's slugs and snails. And so the best thing to do, there's an easy thing to do, is so that's, to clear um, any debris from Gardner's the Gardener's World, I think, on Radio 4. Weeds or you've Let's got have some, a quick tune around. I don't know, just thick grassy meadow nearby, anything like that, that's all sort of pulled up and away if you don't need it. And also, if there are any small shrubby plants, look underneath them and see if the snails are hiding there by day. And obviously... You need to go to bed a bit later because it's <laughs> <laughs> when the damages occur. It's, it's, it's a family from London going up to Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. I know the dad... Works. Does he work in the government? Yes, yeah, well? foreign I think, office. Right. Okay. I think that's probably Radio Wales, or one of the local Radio uh, yeah, Welsh stations. He's imprisoned. Oh, okay. After being falsely accused of spying. Right. So that's why you couldn't come home, Gary. Right. So that's that. That I big sense. Radio oh, my Wales. daddy's here. My daddy's here. Oh, fair enough. Yes. Good, good on him. Right. Right. So tell us about the railway children return set. 50 years later, yes. too? You can, yes. hear, you yeah, can yeah, hear the audio set, quality, it's really good. The Second World War. Uh, and Roberta, or Bob, who was originally played by Jen Lapp. Beat you, Gallen. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. That's it. Uh, Hello. Could be Radio Carmarthenshire or something like that. Very Welsh. Yeah. 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 spend too long on the music stations. Let's come back this way. Unfortunately, but it means that they're also totally safe for garden birds, hedgehogs, and come to that, domestic pets and humans as well. So that's a really good approach as far as I'm concerned if you've got quite a serious problem and you'll find they have a sort of a knock-on effect from year to year as well. I, I hardly do anything much in the way of slug control now because I've used them for a couple of years. Chris, would you have anything to add? Um, and the other thing, of course, that traditionally you had to do to get a really good crop of, um, of dahlias is to um, plant your dahlia tubers. <laughs> Um, but it's it, again, it's it's weird because I said it's very twee and, and it's very old fashioned. But the, you know, I expect that just yes. from reading the title of the yeah, film. Yeah, but but it, the fact that it has this subplot uh, about uh, racism within the U.S. Army, which isn't really uh, followed through on, it, it feels a bit uh, a bit too light. That that well, you could. <laughs> So I think that gives you more or less a demonstration. I, I would, it's a pity I can't stay longer on the music stations, but, um, you know, the YouTube with their their um, very draconian copyright laws, which are probably understandable, um, <clears throat> can't really play too much music, but it does give you a bit of a demo of this uh, FM radio, which I am very surprised, actually, as I said, it works so well uh, in terms of the actual audio quality. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, hope to catch you again soon. <laughs>